For professional grade deep tissue body butter that you can trust and t-shirts that you can be proud to wear, head over to rebelmassage.com. I'll include the link in the description below. Draping is at the most basic core of what we do. And the most important thing you need to know about it is that it's all about safety. So even in undraping the arm, all I'm doing is pulling the drape over my client's arm and allowing the drape to fall between her arm and her rib cage so that when I pull her arm away from her body, I can tuck the sheet underneath her back and pull her arm down, tucking her own sheet in and helping her feel secure. Once I've done whatever work I wanna do, it then becomes about moving the arm around and making sure that she feels safe in that process. I've swung my client's arm over her head and positioned myself at the head of the table. And before I pull on her arm to give her a nice lateral stretch, I wanna make sure that the sheet stays tucked in and really close to her body. From here, I can hook my arm into her elbow, lean back, stretch out the lats, the teres major and minor, and make sure that I'm retucking as I go so that I continue that feeling of safety and support. Doing the more specific work while keeping the drape in place is where things can get really tricky, especially with a female client and especially into the pecs and the shoulder. One of the best ways to master this is to work directly through the sheet. So I've pulled the sheet up over her shoulder, I've pulled the blanket away, and I'm making sure the sheet stays tucked under her back. I'm then using one hand to compress into the pecs and using the other arm to manipulate how the humerus falls back. This is a simple pin and stretch technique that can be done over the sheets and into the pecs, creating some really nice length while keeping the client tucked in. The other area that is equally, if not more tricky to access is the subscapularis. So I've isolated where the subscapularis is and I'm bringing the sheet back over the area so again, I can work through the sheet and help my client feel safe. I'm relying again on the pin and stretch technique, which I will repeat is a powerful tool to use over a drape and keeping your client safe. I'm using one hand to compress down into the subscapularis while using my other hand to allow the length to happen in that muscle. If you want to, you can add a little friction in here, create a little extra stretch at the end by pulling the elbow towards you, but this is a great tool for this area. If you're working with a client with larger breast tissue, engage her in her own safety by asking her if she wants to hold her own drape or even pull her own breast tissue out of the way. This helps her feel in control of her own draping and allows you to do the work that you need to do. I'm giving my client one last lateral stretch before I bring her arm across her body and start to bleed the work I just did from lateral to posterior. First things first, I wanna make sure that her body mechanics don't get in the way of my body mechanics. So I placed her left arm down by her side and I'm holding onto her right arm as I lean back at a diagonal away from the far corner of the table. I've also carefully placed her right hand on her left shoulder and now I can start to do the work. I'm reinforcing the feeling of the drape on her back so that her sense of safety remains a constant throughout the session. While I'm here, I wanna create a subtle passive stretch for all those intervertebral muscles. So I'm tucking the drape back under her back, using one hand to lift while I let the other hand drop. I'm gonna alternate going up the back, ultimately till I get to the shoulder, where I wanna bring that work into the scapula and rotate the scapula using one hand to push on the lateral border and the other hand to push on the superior angle. It might be hard to palpate exactly where to put your fingers through the blanket, so I'm gonna slide the blanket aside and make sure that the sheet stays nice and tucked in. From here, I'm not reaching across the spine. I'm staying on the side of the spine that my hands are on, so from this angle, her right side, and I'm hooking my fingertips into the paraspinals. So as I work my way up the spine, I'm creating a little bit of a shift within the transversospinalis group and among the intervertebral joints themselves, allowing for some softness in an area that often is guarded and holding. You can mix things up by bringing both hands into the low back and working your way up the spine. Both techniques are awesome. Just play around with what feels beneficial to your client. Resetting your client's arm back to neutral is just a matter of reinforcing that idea of safety. So I wanna make sure that I've got enough fabric in the sheet, pulling it up towards her head. And then as I walk her arm around the table, tucking it underneath her back and into her axillary area so that she feels tucked in and safe. And then once I'm back to this side of the table, I'm gonna offer a little traction into the arm and shoulder, realigning her spine, bringing her head back to neutral. And then from here, redraping her arm is just a matter of pushing the blanket towards her body, creating space on the table, laying her arm back down into position and pulling the sheet over her arm. 
Moving on to the leg, there are lots of different ways to make your client feel safe here. But what I do is I accordion the sheet so that the edge of the sheet that is closest to me lies in between her ankles. That gives me access to being able to pull the sheet up without it feeling clumsy or cluttered. So I'm using my right hand here to lift her leg just a little bit and my left hand to pull that sheet up towards her hip and creating what a lot of people call a diaper drape and what I call tucked in. At this point, a smart tip is to bring the extra fabric from the sheet up from the foot end of the table so that when you start to bring your client's leg into different stretches, you can offer a couple different options for safety. So the first option, I've handed my client the edges of the sheet so that she can tug the sheet against her own leg and be in control of her own drape. And I just love the idea of engaging and empowering my client as much as I can during a session. So I can give her the drape and talk her through keeping it nice and taut while I move her leg around, or I can hold the drape for her, which is a little harder for me mechanically. So for this video, I'm going to have her hold onto the drape and start to stretch her leg out a little bit. I'm going to start with a pretty common hip stretch, but there are two things I want to point out that are going to differentiate how you do this hip stretch for your clients. The first thing is really getting your client to let go of their leg so that you can actually move it. Asking them to allow their knee to fall out to the side or to give them the weight of their leg into your hands are two verbal cues that I've found work really well. The other tip is to make sure that nothing is pinching in the front of their hip. So as you bring their knee to their chest or lever their lower leg into a nice hip twist, check in with them and if anything is pinching, apply a little traction by tugging inferiorly and then try again. So I've guided my client's leg across her own body and I want to tuck that sheet in before I move around to the other side of the table because I want to reinforce that idea that she is completely secure. From this position, I've got my left hand tucked underneath her knee and my right hand over the drape, reinforcing that feeling of safety, but at the same time, compressing into the lateral sacrum and all the attachments that come into this area. I'm sinking in, I'm creating a nice stretch and helping her feel secure all the while. Getting your client's leg back to neutral can be really tricky from this position, so I'm gonna ask her to grab her own sheet again and pull the sheet tight against her inner thigh as I guide her leg back down to the table. As always, you wanna apply a little traction after you do any joint manipulation. But the other question you might be having is, how do you do all of this draping work if your client is a guy? Well, I'm glad you asked. So this is not true across the board, but the main differences between working on a male client and a female client is that a male client tends to have a heavier leg and they tend to be a little bit tighter and harder to stretch. So similar to the female client, I wanna drape in the same way, ensuring that he is tucked in and safe, but maybe instead of focusing on bringing the knee to the chest, I wanna pay a little attention to the hamstrings. So once I've got my client's leg above his chest, I'm gonna extend his knee, push his ankle up towards the ceiling, and check in from here. Super easy to do a PNF in this position, or like I did with my female client, leverage the lower leg, twist the hip open, and cross his leg over his own body. This stretch can feel amazing for the piriformis and the other deep six lateral rotators of the hip, and the more superiorly you position the knee, the deeper that stretch is gonna feel for your client. Once you've got his leg across his body, check in again, make sure nothing is being pinched, offer his hip a little space, and then creating a stretch all the way through the hamstrings, into the glutes, into the deep six, and up the back can be as simple as holding on to the posterior knee and leaning back a little bit like you're water skiing. While I'm playing around a little bit with the extension of his knee and how much flexibility I can get, I wanna mention really quickly that if I know I'm doing any of these stretches with a male client or a female client, I will ask them to wear some sort of athletic short. Worrying about the drape while you're stretching your client can be distracting, so I'd much rather do the work and have my client feel safe than spend too much time fiddling with the sheet. I'm doing the same work I did here with my female client, but because his leg is heavier, I'm opting to use both hands into the lateral sacrum and into the glutes. I'm gonna remind him to let go of his legs so that his spine and his low back can feel that stretch, but I'm really compressing in while I lean back and inviting in the help of gravity to pull down on his legs so the work itself can be effective and I don't have to strain my own body. Again, I'm gonna ask my client to hold onto that sheet and pull it tight while I lay his leg back down on the table. And then once I've got his leg back to neutral, redraping is simple. Keeping his knee in a slightly bent position, I'm using my left hand to lift his leg just a little bit from the hip up from the table and using my right hand to pull the sheet down towards his feet. And from here, your work is done. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like and the subscribe button. It's really cool when you do it. Also, if you're interested in more content like this, head over to my Patreon page. I'll include the link in the description below.